in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live, and we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website, and if you'd like to engage live in the content, you gotta go follow me over on Instagram. My username there, at LivinLowCarbMan, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content, just like Miracle of Keto and Debbie and Tammy and Jenny and all these wonderful people, Val, all coming in right now. Thank you guys for being here today on Jimmy Rants. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it does disappear, so then you'll have to hop on over to YouTube where we post all of the past episodes. Type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants, you will find the show Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show is in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcast as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. <clears throat> Today's Jimmy Rants is going to be another one of those that I want you to think. Because as I scroll through social media... As I look online in various places, as I get emails from people in my personal e email box, I see a whole lot of people that have regret. <clears throat> and they go through their entire lives hanging on to pains, circumstances, things that have happened to them in their past. And they have guilt that they just can't let go of. Can I just tell you from personal experience how feeling guilty about something that happened in ancient history will eat away at you? And you know this already. I'm just articulating what you're already thinking in your head. And all of us know that if you hang on to all of those past pains, it's extremely difficult to live in the here and now. And I'll give you a very real example in my life. I have talked about on Jimmy Rance before that I did not have the best family life growing up. I had uh, I had a father who beat me. Um, and some days he would smash my head into the wall. Um, and that was a whole lot of pain physically. But the emotional pain, you guys, lasted far longer than the bruises that ended up on my body. And if you can't forgive yourself and forgive them and all of the things that got you to that point that you had pain or maybe you're the one who caused pain in someone else and you now feel guilty about it it's i mean it's the most debilitating thing that nobody ever talks about in the greater conversation about health everybody wants to put the focus on diet they want to put the focus on uh, you're not exercising enough um, they want to look at all kinds of things. Who talks about the emotional scars? Who talks about the head stuff that makes you make choices that, but for having the guilt and shame of things that happened in your past, uh, but for that, you would not be making stupid choices. Nobody in their right mind eats a Ding Dong or a Twinkie or a Coca-Cola unless they are trying to cover up some kind of of guilt and pain from their past. Can I get real today? Can, can I just share openly? I honestly believe the reason why so many people eat crappy garbage uh, initially in the higher amounts than just a little bit, uh, when you start eating a whole lot of crappy garbage, I think it is a direct result of having intense amounts of guilt 
and or pain that still exist from your past. And then once you have the crappy garbage to cover the guilt and the pain from your past, then you get addicted to those foods and then the cycle begins. Obesity, chronic disease, on and on and on. But when you hear people talk about weight loss and you hear people talking about getting healthier, do you ever hear them discuss emotional scars? Do you ever hear them talk about maybe things in your past might have made this situation the way it was? I, I haven't. And again, I'm not one of those people who says, oh, because I was abused as a child, it's, it's the reason for all the bad things in my life. You know what Jimmy Moore did? It took me most of my 20s and even into my early 30s to get over the emotional pain from my past. And once I hit 32 and I started on the Atkins diet and I got healthier, I was able to make a change up here. And that's, I think, what allowed me to get in the right mindset to be ready to take on a diet that would change my life forever. And most people, they, they would prefer to wallow. Oh, you need to feel bad for me. I went through really traumatic times in my life. And some of you guys went through a lot more traumatic stuff than I did. Um, and and I, I wouldn't want to go through what some of you guys had to go through. But the reality is those things influence you. And I'll also say that I don't bemoan what I went through. Because all of the guilt and all of the pain from my past actually make me into who I am today. And I've talked about this before as well. That I don't think I would have the, the compassion I have for other people today had I not gone through personal pain uh, in my own life. And so I'm, I'm using this today, you guys, as an encouragement to you. Because maybe today you're thinking, oh, I just can't seem to get a leg up in the world. I just, I, I have such pain. And it's right here, by the way. Right here is where all of that happens. And am I the only one where you have those moments where the pain happened and they're on constant replay? Replay on the DVR right there. Replay, replay. Now, it's been many years for me since I have forgiven uh, and, and tried to move on. But guys, I'm going to be real honest with you. There are some days when some of the pain from the past pops in the head. And it's on those days I'm reminded, uh, okay, it's still there. Even though I've been able to manage it, even though those things are ancient history now, the fact is they happened. The fact is my brain remembers those things. But it's not the mere memory of bad things that happened in your past. It's what do you do with it? What do you do with when you have a thought like that? Do you let it bring you down? Do you start feeling all those guilty feelings and shame feelings all over again? Or do you decide that right here, right now, I'm going to make a clean slate? And that sounds so easy. It sounds actually cliche, and I hate cliches. Uh, but it sounds like, oh, well, that's easy for you to say, Jimmy, just create a clean slate. And I realize the immense pressure and pain that it takes to do that. And I see my friend Brittany is on here. She will be the first to tell you going through some really traumatic stuff herself. Brittany, actually, you inspired this Jimmy Rance today with your post that you did yesterday. So thank you for this. Uh, but it, it conjured up a lot of thoughts in my own mind about some of the things that I went through uh, as a child. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I was abused by my dad. Um, he would bang my head against the wall and punch me and it it was traumatic and it took most of my 20s to get beyond that. Um, and into my 30s is when I finally forgave and moved on um, for the first steps of moving on. Obviously, when you move on, it's not just, okay, today I'm moving on. It just, it doesn't work that way. The pain will always be there in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But it's not the mere presence of the pain or the mere memories that keep playing on DVR in your head. It's what do you do with it? 
What do you do to move on? And, you know, it could take years. I would say that most of my 20s, I didn't have, I, it was just horrible. And how Christine stayed married to me in our 20s in the, like the first eight, eight years of our marriage, I don't know. Because that woman is a woman of grace and love. Uh, because I was not necessarily a very nice human being for all those years. Diet helped with that, by the way. Once I went on the low-carb diet, that helped to calm it down a bit. Uh, and even after that, at the age of 32, it took probably another six to eight years for then that to kick in. Um, and a little bit of that is what happens naturally when you age. But there's some 60-year-old turd balls out there. So I don't think age alone is what does it. I think the diet has been pretty miraculous in helping with this. So if you're just joining us, do you have guilt? Do you have shame from your past that still plagues you today? Maybe you're eating a ketogenic diet and you're just not getting anywhere. And you're going, man, this diet really sucks. Maybe it's not the diet. Maybe you've got unresolved guilt that you were a perpetrator of some sort of action in the past that you're now incredibly guilty about. Maybe you've got pain, pain that came from circumstances in your life, life events, death of a family member, something happened in your past that gave you pain and you haven't been able to resolve it and you still feel the effects of that. Can I tell you physiologically, let's lay aside the emotional aspect of it. Physiologically, when you hold on to guilt, pain, shame from your past, your body thinks you're in crisis. You have so many hormones that kick in, namely cortisol, uh, and then cortisol raises blood sugar, blood sugar raises insulin, Insulin raises inflammation. You see how it cascades? And it all started with the shame, the guilt, the pain. So what I'm urging you to do here today is let it go. Let go of that guilt. Let go of the pain and the shame that happened in your past. And here's the thing too. People are like, well, I don't want to forgive that person that did that to me, whatever that is. Newsflash, they've moved on. They don't even know that you're still in pain. You're the only one still suffering. So if you can't let it go, who's gonna let it go for you? You're the only one being affected by this. And again, from personal experience, I know this is so incredibly hard. Immeasurably hard. But what I loved about reading Brittany's story yesterday and I told her as much. This is a sign of incredible courage and strength to overcome some of the most horrific things that have ever happened. Courage and strength. And to me, those are characteristics of someone that you want to know, you want to love, you want to be a friend with. And if you can embrace those things in your life to bring about healing Guess what the ramifications of that is? That's right. You lose weight. You improve your health. You take on some new um, entrepreneurial spirit of wanting to pretty much do anything that you wanted in your life. You, you know what happened for me? When I turned 32 is when I decided to go on the Atkins diet. It was after all that pain and having to come out the other side of that finally coming to this point of letting go of the guilt and pain from my past, from my uh, growing up years and into my 20s. I'd been out of the house for over a decade and I was still dealing with some of the emotional head stuff of all this. And once I let it go, once I forgave and moved on in my own life, guess what happened? That's when good things started happening for me. I lost 180 pounds in 2004. I started uh, living La Vida Low Carb, first as a blog, then as a podcast, then as a business. Uh, and then just worked my tail off and used those experiences from my past, not in a negative way, but in a very positive way. 
and use those in such a way that now I can help other people, feel empathy for other people, encourage other people. People always say, I love how encouraging you are on your Jimmy rants. And I'm like, I don't know that I would be the encourager I am had I not gone through the pain of my past experiences. Seems so ironic, right? That my dad had to beat the crap out of me for me to be a nice guy as an adult that would love and encourage other people. I don't know that I would be the same man. I don't know that I would have a tender heartedness for other people, a compassion, a love for other people, a desire to see other people succeed today had I not gone through some of those things in my past. And again, I'm not one of those people who's blaming all the bad things that happened in my life on what happened when I was younger. And today I'm very thankful that I went through all that because if I'm the man I am today because of those experiences, then I think it worked out, worked out pretty good. And I am by no means perfect. I have a wife that reminds me of that on a daily basis. Um, just kidding. Christine is a sweetheart, but she does encourage me. And at times she does challenge me. Hey, dude, that's not cool. Um, and I love that. Um, she's definitely been a big part of this growth process as well because she lived all through the 20s when I was working through this. And then she's been there ever since all the uh, nutrition change and other life change. And of course, all the things that have happened in my career, she's been there. And so because I decided to make it a clean slate at one point in my life, and because I decided to let go of the guilt and shame and pain from the past, and I realized, guys, it's playing on replay constantly. You see it. In your mind's eye, you still see all those things. Maybe it's things you've done. Maybe it's things that someone else did to you. Regardless, let it go. Let it go. Because if you let it go, good things are going to happen for you. They are. I honestly believe that. And again, this is a little off the beaten path on Jimmy Rants today, but I love these kind because these are things that I share from my heart. And I had no intention even half an hour ago to talk about this at all. This just popped in my head that I need to talk about this. Obviously, I had some things to share. And hopefully today, this might have encouraged you a little bit. Maybe you're one of those people and you're watching this crazy guy in the blue shirt sitting in his car uh, about to get on the low carb cruise here uh, in a couple of days. Maybe you are watching this and going, I just, I'm not feeling life right now. And I don't know why I'm doing keto perfectly and I'm exercising and I'm trying to sleep better and I think I don't have much stress, but you got unresolved pain, unresolved uh, guilt, shame from your past. Maybe this is the impetus. Today is your day. Make it a clean slate. Wipe it clean. And yes, there will still be some smudges on that clean slate, but it's a clean slate. You're letting go of so much stuff that you don't even realize you're dealing with in the day to day. I think about all those years that I was angry at the world. Why? I was angry at God. Why did I have to go through having my head smashed into a wall? I mean, literally to the point where there would be holes in the wall. Why did I get punched in the mouth and punched in the eye? Why did I have to go through that? I asked why a lot. And when I came to the realization that there was no answer to the why, that's when I realized, hey, I have to let it go because it was eating me alive. I know this is why my brother Kevin had his heart attacks in his early 30s and why he died at 41. He had immense stress too because he was beating the crap out of as well. And it doesn't come without consequence. It doesn't. But happy ending to the story is you can come out the other side of it but it all starts with that day that you let it go. 
can I encourage you to make that day sooner than later? Because the sooner you let go of all the guilt, shame, and pain from your past, whatever the circumstances, whatever it is, the sooner you let all of that go and the sooner you start day one of, I am giving all that up, I am forgiving, I am going to start living my life perhaps for the first time in my life. I don't care how old you are. You could be 63 years old right now. Today can be day one of a guilt-free, pain-free, shame-free life. And if you do that, your health is going to skyrocket. You're going to do so many good biochemical things in your body because you have let go of the emotional carbs that you've been eating. And I want you to look at all of this guilt, pain, and shame from your past and all the things that happen in your head like you would a big old plate of crappy garbage. Because every time you allow those things to pervade, you're taking a big old bite from that crappy garbage known as emotional stress. Stop it. Let it go. Move on. And you'll be thankful later. All right, guys, that's all I had to say here today. Let me see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Good morning, Ashton. Thanks for being here. Hello, Jellies. Thanks for being here. Hello, Dan. Uh, Brittany says, yes, pain can be constant. I push back at it for sure. And and you're working through that, Brittany. I think once, uh, once you kind of work it out, for yourself and you are you're you're doing it the fact that you're talking so openly about it on social media and again uh real food real life if you're not already following Brittany go go follow real food dot real life on Instagram and she's doing an amazing job of being very vulnerable open honest and she went through some really horrific things in her past that I would not wish on any anybody and especially any woman um but you're stronger today. You are that beautiful, awesome human being that you are today, Brittany, because of all those things you went through. I know it seems so weird and you can't really necessarily always see it, but I see it. I see it in you. Mary Posa says, the problem is people think they need to forgive and forget, but you never forget. And that's okay. Forgiveness is a conscious choice. Forgiveness shows that you rise above the situation. I think people think that situations are going to rule them and should rule them. No, you should rule the situation. You should take control of the narrative. Anytime you listen to like some topic that's out there in the mainstream uh, uh, of any kind, topic of any kind, what ends up happening is someone takes control of the narrative and then people start believing whatever the narrative is. Well, the same happens for you. You can take control of the narrative. You could frame it as, oh, my my dad beat me up when I was a kid, and so therefore I'm going to wallow in fear and angst and woe is me-ism for the rest of my life. Or you could say, my dad beat me in the past, but I was able to overcome that because I forgave him. I moved on with my life, and now I've become a three-time international best-selling author. I have uh, five very popular podcasts and I've made something of my life where I'm trying to impact the lives of other people in a positive way. Which one sounds better? Duh. You know which one. Uh, I'm reading The Keto Cure, says M. Norman. I love your tender heart and the comments you put in. So sorry that you went through this. Uh, again, I'm, I'm glad that I did. Thank you for that, by the way. But I'm glad that I did because I think it shaped me and molded me into the man that you guys know and love today. So, uh, yes, it was hard then, but the pay dirt of all of that is I went through that experience so I could be the person I am today. Uh, Pammy says, I work with homeless youth that have some pretty traumatic pasts. This is how we work with them, helping them move on from this day forward. It's so tough for sure. It is a daily battle. Well, Pam, I am so glad that there's people like you out there helping these at-risk youth. And I think about all the criminal activity that takes place of kids that are in their 20s. And I wonder how much of that is exactly what you're talking about here today. 
so much pain, so many things that happened in their past that they can't get that DVR movie to stop playing in their mind's eye. And it's tough. It's very tough. So what you're doing is valiant. Um, and I think the best thing people in those situations need is love that someone gives a crap about them. Um, and I know that's what you, you guys in your group are trying to do to help them out. <clears throat> Brittany says, I have forgiven that person who abused me, but the memories are still there. The flashbacks get less and less, but still hard to push through in moments. I still have them too, Brittany. Um, I can literally visualize one specific time when my head went through a wall and I could see how upset he got. How dare my head bust through the wall? He was going to have to speckle that and he never did, by the way. He just left the hole in the wall that had the shape of my head. Um, so I still see that in my mind's eye, even as I talk about it right now, I can see it right now. Does it bother me as much? No. And there's a great song uh, on Christian radio right now called Thankful for the Scars. I want you to go look it up on YouTube. It's a pretty powerful song. And it talks about this very thing, that there are things from our past that shaped and molded us into who we are. Uh, so again, thankful for the scars. Uh, and it seems so weird to people. Why would I be thankful for bad things that happen? I need to be uh, I, I mean, I need to seek revenge. I need to, you know, not give them the glory of saying, okay, that was okay. It was not okay. You're not saying that it's okay when you're grateful and thankful for the scars of your past. What you're saying is, I refuse to allow this to dictate my future. How many years do you go through trying to work through the pain of your past? How many years were wasted on emotional energy and going through stuff in your own life. And then if you have kids of your own, maybe some of those scars start to get passed on to them. That's one thing I'm kind of grateful for that we never had kids. Um, and it's a horrible thing to, to say because I always wanted to be a dad. And But I always wonder, I wonder if the reason we didn't have kids or couldn't have kids was maybe I would have passed on some of those scars to them. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough one to think about. Being fat equals no one wanted me, said Brittany. Oh, Brittany, you're right. I mean, that I know that there's women who have scars in their past who they purposely packed on the pounds um, and then of course, having all that emotional scarism from the past, help them do it because you, you want to eat your feelings. Uh, it was my protection and now it's gone. Yeah. And, and that opened up a lot of wounds for you after you lost weight. Uh, Brittany, you guys, in case you don't know, uh, has lost a significant amount of weight eating keto. And when you start losing the weight and underneath all of those layers, you decide and, and show the world, here's who I am, and you feel exposed and you feel vulnerable. Um, and in that vulnerability, some people would say, well, I don't like this, and they go back to eating and, and getting fat again. For Brittany, she's choosing to make it a strength. And so, again, I'm very proud of you, Britt. Tammy says, forgiving is for you, not the perpetrator. It all starts the healing process. Yes, there's a lot of people that don't ever get to that point where they allow themselves to heal. It's one reason I wanted to do this Jimmy Rants here today is I wanted to put it on your radar screen. Maybe you're in that situation. Maybe you don't even realize that you are still harboring all those feelings. Nobody talks about this, guys. Nobody looks at this part of the equation. They don't. All those idiots who say the most ugly, vile things about me on social media. Uh, and I had two more on YouTube this morning. All those people who post those kinds of comments, they don't know what happened in my past. They don't know that all that emotional and physical uh, abuse that I dealt with makes me not really give a damn about what they think of me. They don't know. 
And it's one thing that I always try to, when I interact with people online, I always say, I have no idea what they've been through in their life. I have no idea what they're going through right now. It's why I try to have a heart for people on a daily basis, even if they don't know how to talk right to other people. Every morning is a new slate, says George. Grace is sufficient for each day. It really is. Um, and I wish people would take on that mantra, George, that today is a new day and today can be better than yesterday. And some people just kind of go through life and they wallow in all of the negative that's happened to them rather than saying today is a new opportunity to be better than yesterday. Maybe this is encouraging someone today. I hope so. Val says, I know I've quoted my 39-year-old niece before, but she told me not to let people live in your head. It's so freeing to forgive others and yourself. Absolutely. Brittany says, when you go through the fire, you either turn to ash or, you melt it, or you're melted and molded into something beautiful. Yep. Indeed. Don't let them live in your head rent-free. Exactly. Exactly, Val. Tracy says, empathy is key. We need to straighten each other's crowns. Ooh, I like that, Tracy. That's cool. Little points in the crown. <laughs> you encourage and teach more than you will ever know. Well, I, I, think, it, I think God gifted me with that. And I wonder, though, out loud, I'm just thinking... Had I been encouraged as a kid, had I been given positive affirmations, had I been given uh, encouragement, I, I was once told, you will amount to nothing and you are totally useless. I was told that by my dad. Um, and I wonder if the script had been flipped and I had been instead uplifted, encouraged. He saw the value in me. Um, that things would have turned out different. I, I don't know the answers, to be honest with you. I know that my dad was literally beaten by his dad. So the cycle kind of continued uh, when he had kids. So, so I have empathy for him today because of what he had to go through. Now today he's 70 years old and he doesn't have any idea what he did. Um, or if he does, he's never articulated. He's never been a touchy feely kind of guy. Um, hard outer shell really never showed emotion at all uh, until my brother died. By the way, when Kevin died, he started crying for the first time in my life. I've ever seen, I had ever seen him cry. Uh, that was 2008 when that happened. And he had a rough childhood as well. So I try to be empathetic towards it. Even though he was my abuser, I tried to show him the love and compassion, knowing that he went through tough stuff too. And this is not abnormal. I'm sharing my story to just let you hear a little bit of this man that you see on Jimmy Rants every day. I just want you to have context for what you're seeing. And maybe you see your own story or some part of, some part of your family and your history that you recognize. I love these kind of rants. Usually it's something I just needed to be reminded of. Thank you, Val. George says, I have a similar childhood, some physical, mostly mental. I've forgiven and seek uh, from my heavenly father that my earthly father is unable to give. Yes, it has made me more empathetic. George, you are a very kind and gentle man. Um, and I'm proud to call you friend. Understanding and forgiving too. Yep. Tracy says, I'm so sorry I too was beaten terribly right before I began living a new life, uh, not by my deceased husband, but from someone uh, after he died. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Tracy, that that happened, but you are a better person today. I honestly believe the bad things that happen to us make us stronger, make us more, and here's a word for you, resilient. You are resilient and if I had to use one word to describe Jimmy Moore, resilient. People say, how do you put up with all the negativity that's said about you online? Resilient. 
How did you overcome the history of your dad beating you and other things happening bad in your life? Resilience. It's a cool word. Look it up if you don't know what it means. Ashton, we have to work through blaming ourselves that we did something to cause what happened. Oh, that preaches Ashton. For the longest time, I'm, I, I kept asking myself, what did I do? Why is this happening? Yeah. And we don't deserve anything better. We need to tell ourselves we are still worthy of having love and happiness. That, that's the crux of what I'm sharing here today on Jimmy Rant. So thank you for that. M. Norman, thanks for being real and laying your heart bare to help others. Hey, always. Um, I think we don't progress in this world without having other people come alongside us and speak truth and speak love and speak compassion and speak empathy. Um, I try to have all of those things every single day with everybody I encounter. And Marie says, your words resonate. Sometimes the replay button gets stuck. Yeah. Especially when you see some specific incidents, incident that happened and it's at the most inopportune times. You know when it happens for me? I'm sitting in church trying to listen to the pastor and it's on replay. I'm like, get the heck out of my head. I'm trying to pay attention to what the pastor's saying. Pushing past it is an ongoing struggle. I know I am better today as a person, but it's always there. Yes. Brittany says, still I rise. My why is to rise above all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, again, guys, go look up realfood.reallife. Brittany wrote a brilliant post yesterday all about rising above all of that mess from her past. It's going to encourage you, I promise. Uh, off to work, but figured I'd say hi. Well, hi, Low Carb New Yorker. I'm glad you're here. Brittany says, forgiving both myself and others is a daily work and it's liberating. Love is a verb. Love is a verb. Love is an action. Love is a conscious choice as well, Brit, uh, uh, Beth. That I don't think enough people use. You can consciously choose to or choose not to love anyone. And some people, they don't love other people until they're first loved. And I think that's wrong. I love other people first. And if they choose not to love me, that's on them. But when you show love to other people, there's a higher propensity that they will reciprocate and give you that love back. M. Norman says, I love that community is so important. Always. Tammy says, journaling helped release the pain that I faced in my childhood. Yeah, I've heard people talk about how they can write out um, their feelings and that helped. I remember being told, Hey, why don't you write a letter to your dad? And then when you're done writing it, rip it up and throw it in the garbage can. I'm like, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. Um, I get the symbolism of it all that you're writing down everything you want to say to them, but you're not actually saying it to them and you're discarding it supposedly to get rid of it forever. But for me, um, I actually had to talk to him. I actually had to go to him and say, you know, that was, that was a very painful thing that I had to deal with growing up. And I forgive you. And the power that came from going right to, and I know not everybody can do that. Um, some situations don't happen because the person's dead. Um, the person refuses to talk to you. You refuse to talk to them, whatever. But it's so much more meaningful if you can have that face-to-face, heart-to-heart. And for me, with my dad, uh, I moved on in my early 30s, uh, being able to forgive him in my heart. But we never actually articulated it until a little bit later. And it was just this last year, uh, not that many months ago, actually. And I shared about this on Jamie Rants. He kind of took responsibility for his actions. And said he, and he said something along the line, and you have to know my dad, he's not a real wordy kind of guy, and he's not a real touchy-feely kind of guy, but he's like, you know, I, I kind of have regrets of what I did. Um, and that was powerful, guys. Um, 
and it makes me feel better as he's at towards the end of his life it makes me feel better that at least he knew what he did was wrong and was kind of uh, fessing up to it doesn't undo what happened doesn't uh, take away some of that pain that's still there the scars are still there but they're scars now and those scars are badges of honor and the scars will be there for the rest of my life what I choose to do with those scars now is use them for good I tell this story here today on Jimmy Rants not to have you feel sympathy for Jimmy Moore today not to have you say, oh my gosh, look what he went through. No wonder he became morbidly obese. No wonder he has some issues in uh, his health. He had to go through some really bad stuff. That's not the point of this Jimmy Rants. Although if you do feel empathy for me because I went through that, that might explain some of why I'd still deal with various things. It's great. But the point of this is letting it go, starting anew, made me a better man and maybe it'll make you a better woman man child whoever you are watching this here today maybe it'll make you a better person and you can finally move on with your life maybe for the first time can you do that can you move on can you allow all that pain shame guilt from your past to be a thing of the past and not let it continue to impact you here in the present. And sometimes it's not even like an ongoing thing from your past. It might be one moment in time, one incident, something happened in your life and 10, 15, 20 years later, you're still reeling from that one thing that happened in your life. Let it go, make a clean slate. What happened, happened. Move on. Move on. Brittany says, I tell you what, I love Jimmy Moore. Well, I love you too. Um, and I sincerely love those of you who watch Jimmy Rants on a, re on a regular basis. And if you're new to this show, yeah, we do things a little bit different than just about any show you've been a part of. There are a lot of really great health podcasts out there, but I'm not hearing... Uh, a lot of the kind of things that we talk about on this show, I'm not hearing it or seeing it on those shows. I try to be open, honest, vulnerable with you guys. And when I do these Jimmy rants that pop in my head just a few minutes before I get on, uh, I had no intention of talking about this, but this is what was on my heart and mind. And in real time, you're getting the raw emotion of it all from me. Um, and that's the way I like it. That's what I think benefits people the most yellow eyed one says i understand that dvd replaying in your head things also play in mind you are blessed though giving uh, given gifts of writing speaking and helping other people i love the person you are today and i pray that god eases the pain he has he has yellow eyed and thank you for that yeah uh, despite all of the uh abuse uh, that i had as a child i excelled academically i was always a word nerd I was the kid that won all the spelling bees. Um, I always loved writing. I won the poetry contest. I was that guy. Um, and I always knew I had gifts and talents that could be used for good. But here's the other thing that all that pain did for me. I never got above a certain point in my career. And I know part of that was my weight Part of that was uh, the anger that I still had and it was showing up, rearing its ugly head at very inopportune times in my career. And all of that had a, had a role. What if I had had my talents cultivated? What if I had been encouraged to excel even more academically? Again, I wasn't, uh, I didn't do bad in school. I was uh, a good student. But how great of a student would I have been had I been encouraged in that uh, and been given <sighs> the love and kindness and compassion as a child? I, I don't know. But again, I have no regrets about the past because, again, who I am right now is a direct result of all those things that happened. I'll tell you what did happen in a good way. When I got out of the house and I went to college 
I committed to work my tail off. I went literally straight out of high school, graduated in May of 1989. And in June of, of 1989, I enrolled in college. And I went to college and I immediately took on two jobs. I took on a full slate of summer classes. Yes, I went to summer before the fall uh, started, uh, even started. I wanted a jump start. So I took like uh, six or eight hours of classes during that summer, took on two jobs, working full-time, about 75, 80 hours a week. I was working two full-time jobs and squeezing in the classes in there as well. And I went full bore, graduated in three years from college, was the first person in my family to graduate college. I was 20 years old when I graduated. Um, and and it started this whole work ethic that I still have today. Would I have had that work ethic had I not been trying to prove myself? I don't know. I don't know. So I think having regrets about your past might be a little silly if you like the person you are today. And I do like this person I am today. Could I be better? Absolutely. Would I be different in a better way had I been encouraged? I don't know the answer to that. And I'm okay with that because I'm good with who I am now. Tammy says, thanks, Jimmy, for this rant. I needed to hear this. I'm sure others will as well. Thank you for that. M. Norman, you're the kind of people I love being a part of. I will give a hug, a smile, or a nod today to let someone know they're loved. Hope we can meet in person someday. Hugs to you. Well, M. Norman, you got to come on the low-carb cruise one of these days. Uh, I'd be delighted to give you a big old hug. And anybody that knows me knows I'm a hugger. I hug everybody. So <laughs> I do love to give hugs. Um, it's cathartic. It's actually very healthy for you. Um, the endorphins and all the things that happen when you hug someone else. And you also show love and respect to other people when you hug them. I know people get weird about hugs sometimes, but a hug is a hug. Um, and it shows that you as a human being have love, kindness, and compassion to other people. And that's what I try to share in my work. Uh, Tracy says, if you're at KetoCon, please come by the Redmond Real Salt uh, booth and let me give you a hug. Thank you for all you do. Oh, I am going to be at KetoCon. Um, I'm not speaking this year. I do have a book signing with Dr. Ken Berry the night before it starts at Book People on that Thursday night. We'll be there all day Friday and about half a day on Saturday before we have to leave for our flight to get back home. But for sure, um, I'll be around. I'm hard to miss. I'm six foot three. Uh, You'll see me, I promise. Uh, I was text talking, allow me to clarify if you will be at KetoCon and come by. Yeah, I, I knew what you meant. See, I could, I've gotten pretty good at this uh, reading Instagram live when uh, text to talk messes up or talk to text messes up. I can read what you meant. So. <laughs> Yellow Eyed says, I think of how different I'd be if things didn't happen to me too. I definitely let, uh, let it all get the best of me and feel loved. Uh, shut down in or and feel loved me. I, sh I shut down in many ways. Yes, 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 yes. Val says we like to hug too. I don't know what it is about a hug. There's some people, again, that get weirded out by, oh, you're hugging me, especially dudes. I, I like hugging everybody, but the dudes, they're just kind of <laughs> turned sideways and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, it's a hug. Don't make it more than it is. Tracy says, I'll be at your book signing. Awesome, awesome. So guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, and I know this was heavy today. Sorry for that. Sorry, not sorry for that. Because some of you needed to hear this. Some of you didn't know I went through all that as a kid. Some of you now have a new perspective of this wackadoodle dude named Jimmy Moore that you watch on Jimmy Rants that you didn't have before. And I like showing this side of me. I want you to know from whence I came. Because some people have this grand illusion that, oh, people that are in leadership positions in keto uh, or people that you look up to online in any field, they got everything worked out and, and there's nothing bad that happened, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Nope. The people that I connect with the most are the people that have stuff, stuff that happened to them because I empathize with them. I know what they went through. 
Lady Elixir, my life has always been about being a fixer and caretaker of other people, taking care of everyone but myself. And that's a big one, Lady Elixir. And the fact that you articulate it and you know it means you can do something about it. And if you do something about it, you can change your life. Let today be that first day of the rest of your life. And again, that's cliche, but today can be that clean slate for you. So perhaps you still have guilt, pain, and shame from your past. And today, let it go. Don't make me sing that song from Frozen now. Because you know I do like to act goofy too. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> and all of you with little munchkins that had to watch that stupid movie again and again and again are now yelling at me, so you're welcome. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is uh, the website. Sorry, Val, too late. She said, please don't sing that song. Let it go, let it go. That's right. Grandmas also have to hear that song from their little five-year-old girl that won't stop singing Frozen songs. So, <laughs> My Cammie just chuckled. Yes, Brittany, you have little ones, so you probably seen that cockamamie movie a million times. So, <laughs> Where was I? JimmyRance.com is the website. If you want to engage live in the content, you got to go follow me over on Instagram Live. I'm at living low carb man. I, I laugh myself so hard I'm crying now, so that's funny. At living low carb man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content. But uh, if you missed the live, hopefully you're watching this on replay over on Instagram. It is up for 24 hours over on Instagram. After 24 hours, it does disappear. You'll need to pop on over to YouTube, type in a keyword Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show is in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. So until next time, let it go, let it go. We'll see you then. <laughs>